ground because this is a very rare and important struggle and often we don't know how these things happen. You know, it's almost behind our backs, so thank you for that. And this hunger strike is a wake-up call for all of us, you know, on how we really need to get organized in a whole different way. So I'd like to invite, is there another speaker? Is there anyone who'd like to, ah, yes, brother, come up. Bring this on up. I, I, my name's Hamja Hassan, I'm the brother of Dalla Hassan who was extradited after six years of uh, detention without trial in this country. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of um, the extradited British nationals, um, but um, I'm also speaking on behalf of an organisation called Stop Isolation, which is a UK-based organisation based in Edinburgh and London now, um, trying to bring the issue of solitary confinement um, as torture and, and, and putting it first on the agenda because it's a thing that unites people from Palestine to Guantanamo Bay. Um, and I think we should remember when we see um, prisons like Guantanamo Bay and Abu Ghraib and the way Bradley Manning was treated um, for nine months in isolation is that where it really begins, which is within the, uh, the American supermax system itself. Um, so we, um, Everything you see in Guantanamo Bay and Abu Ghraib, like force feeding, force cell extraction, are things which exist within the US domestic supermax system. Um, so prisons that should also be on our radar are ones like the one in um, California, in the shoe unit. Prisons like Pelican Bay, prisons like Mariam, prisons like ADX Florence or Metropolitan Correctional Centre. Um, Joshua Dreytel, who actually represented uh, David Hicks in the Australian Guantanamo Bay actually went to Metropolitan Correctional Centre said, and said it was actually a lot worse than um, Guantanamo Bay. And when Omar Kader, the, uh, the child um, Canadian in Guantanamo Bay, he was always threatened to be sent to an American prison. Um, the prisoners in California do no more than underline the United Nations guidelines on, on prisoners. Uh, Juan Mendes, United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture, who the United States will still not allow full access to their prisons, um, such as ADH Florence. And, um, you know, even torture centres like Morocco, for all their problems, they at least allow Juan Mendes access to uh, prisoners like Ali Aras and people being tortured. The United States won't even allow them access. Even Amnesty International um, isn't allowed access um, to prisons like ADX Florence. Um, the the 30,000 people on hunger strike, um, firstly I'd like to pay tribute to their, their, their resistance and the resistance of their families as well and those supporting them including their mothers and daughters. There are people in Californian prisons who haven't even touched their own sisters or daughters or mothers uh, for up to three decades, which is astonishing. So we are much defending their right and their, their right to love and care for their own relatives as much as the uh, prisoners' rights yeah, themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, my mum would have not, you know, it's probably the last time she ever hugged her son where, when, when he was brutally extradited in October last year. Um, the, the horrible thing is the Conservative government, the very first thing they boasted about at the concert, Theresa May boasted about was, wasn't it great to say goodbye to the, 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 those four others? Um, in relation to my brother's extradition. My brother's actually um, has Asperger's syndrome like Gary McKinnon um, oh. and, and the same associative risks. Um, but um, Gary McKinnon was spared and um, my brother was extradited um, just 10 days beforehand. Um, and we know because the Daily Mail had a campaign called British Justice for British Citizens while referring to my brother's unwanted guests. So racism is involved in the partisan application of the law and when the state withdraws its basic protections and which is the basic reason it exists. Uh, oh dear. Uh, over 50% of suicides occur in solitary confinement in the United States and that's something according to their own statistics. Senator Dick Durbin said that in the first congressional hearing and that's something we should remember whilst being less than 5% um, of the prison population um, sorry. Um, the, the sad thing is the, 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 the attempt by the courts to challenge these conditions haven't, hasn't actually been that great. My brother actually attempted to challenge life without parole, um, extreme isolation and solitary confinement in, in United States prisons 
and the European Court of Human Rights, after a closed-door meeting with Washington, actually said that was fine. Now, whilst at the same time, so it is up to those prisoners' hunger st hung stomachs to implement international law and international guidelines. Um, since the United Nations Special Rapporteur said said no one should be kept for longer than 14 days of in solitary confinement, there should be no reason to keep someone in pre-trial solitary confinement. Because remember, my brother hasn't actually been convicted of anything yet, and and, and has spent already seven years um, some in group isolation in this country and in solitary confinement, uh, which will be for at least yeah, and doesn't even have a trial until March 2014. Um, so these are the longest detentions without trial. So they've seen the Guantanamo effect just go um, right into the British justice system and sort of become completely extraterritorial. Um, so Guantanamo's begin at home too. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, we really want to highlight the situation of uh, people being imprisoned and detained in all kinds of ways. Um, including those under, you know, indefinitely detained and Guantanamo. And the London Guantanamo campaign, uh, their members are in the hunger strike today. They've written an article saying that it's absolutely urgent to put together Guantanamo and the California hunger strike. And they are very keen to work together on the issue and we think that that's the way to go. Um, I just wanted to read a statement. We had a message of support from Robert King, who's the only freed member of the Angola Three. And many of us know that the Angola Three were imprisoned in Louisiana, which is uh, an absolute racist hellhole in the U.S. They were extraordinary in that the, in, from inside they organized against segregation within the prison. They organized against six, systematic rape in prison and they also organized as jailhouse lawyers to help other prisoners get their rights from inside. They have been locked up for 40 years now and most of that time in solitary confinement. Shame. Shame. One of the brothers has now has a liver uh, cancer and the, the campaign, the, his international solidarity campaign is fighting to get him out so that he can have some, some of his life left. And we think that it's really urgent that we pay attention to the uh, situation of the Angola Three in our organizing. And this is a message from Robert King. He says, the International Co Coalition to Free the Angola Three and I, Robert King, the only free member of the uh, Angola Three, stand side by side in solidarity with the prison, the California hunger strikers. Forty years ago, with my comrades Herman Wallace and Albert Woodfox, we challenged the brutal prison system in the USA and organized people to demonstrate and stand up for what is right. We too organized hunger strikes, so I know what strength and conviction this takes. Yes. I spent 29 years in solitary confinement, oh, God. and Herman and Albert remain in these torturous conditions today. My soul cries knowing that 40 years later, the industrial prison complex is still torturing and enslaving people and still ignoring the need for morality and humanity, supported by a judicial system that allows the murder of so many innocent, unarmed black men to go unpunished. We stand in solidarity. May the struggle continue. Power to the people. Robert King.